So we're going to talk today about uh, yield analysis with electromagnetic simulation. Um, that by itself is not necessarily a revolutionary topic, but the way we have recently implemented, I think, is quite novel, and that's what we're going to focus on today. So, you know, why do we do yield analysis? Well, very simply, you can't buy the perfect part, right? You design your, your circuit, and you design with certain tolerances in mind. The nominal design is going to work perfectly, but as component variations come into play, we have to account for those, and we have to be able to withstand the variations imposed by those part variations. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the best nominal design doesn't necessarily make for the most tolerant design for yield variations. So the method that we're talking about today is traditional Monte Carlo analysis, where you're going to indicate which parameters have statistical variations. You'll indicate the actual parametric variation. Is it Gaussian? Is it uniform? Is it bimodal? So right, if you buy 5% parts, you never get anything between minus 2 and 2, because those go into the more expensive bucket. So you know, those are the kinds of things that a simulator has to account for, and that's what we do with our Monte Carlo analysis. By running a large number, typically hundreds or thousands of iterations, we seek to cover all the possible combinations and be able to identify the sensitivity of our circuit to various part uh, distributions and how the nominal response is going to shift as random parts are combined into a system. So Monte Carlo has been a part of traditional circuit analysis for many, many years. Uh, I've been in RFEDA since 1991, and Monte Carlo was a part of RFEDA even 20 years ago. Uh, what's different and what we are now releasing in AWR 2011 is the ability to parameterize electromagnetic structures directly. So EM analysis is typically done on simple polygons. They can be arbitrarily drawn. The mesher takes care of those geometries, but there is typically no parameterization involved that we can use to associate statistical variation. And that's the novel part of our new electromagnetic-based yield and optimization. Now, in order to do this, we have to use what we call our extraction flow. And this is a method by which we control electromagnetic analysis from a schematic and What's new now in Microwave Office is the fact that electromagnetic structures, while they're comprised of polygons, also have an underlying schematic where we can place control elements that have the ability to modify geometry in a parametric sense. So we're going to show a couple of different methods of how we approach this. Uh, there's going to be both optimization and yield analysis on pure polygon-driven electromagnetic structures. Okay? So what is extraction? Well, in a typical schematic, we have two elements, the stack up, this guy. <laughs> This defines the, the layer stack, so dielectrics, metal layers, and so on. And then the extract block actually controls the generation of the electromagnetic document as different things vary. So those two elements work together to control the extracted electromagnetic document. And we'll show an example of that in a couple of slides. Here's an example of a very simple filter. Um, the electromagnetic part of the structure is just the printed metal, right? There's gaps for all the surface mount components, 
which appear in green. And, you know, traditionally we've done this kind of analysis by assigning parametric variation to the surface mount components, but not changing the underlying EM structure. And this new capability will allow us to actually change the geometries of the electromagnetic structure in the midst of a yield analysis. So the extracted elements are highlighted in red in the uh, 3D view at the top. Um, they produce this structure, which is then meshed. You can see the mesh. And the colors here simply indicate DC connectivity. So if something is in two different colors, it means they're not connected. If we short out two of these, they will be connected. They'll appear in the same color. So what we've done then, we've assigned two parameters to have statistical variation. If we back up for a second, the, the through lines, so those five lines, they've been assigned a... Um, 5% uniform variation. So this is one situation where a uniform distribution does make sense because it's, it's a processing variation. It's not a component tolerance. It's etching and, and just processing the board. So we've put a uniform 5% tolerance on that. And then the, um, the length of the line between these pairs has also been assigned a statistical variation. The idea then is that the schematic in the upper left controls all of this and we have the ability to run an actual yield analysis. What makes this different is that for every one of these iterations an electromagnetic structure was regenerated and analyzed. So this is not something that happened in a matter of seconds. Every iteration involved a full electromagnetic analysis and you can see that each iteration took nine and a half seconds. Okay, So this is about a hundred iterations. That's about a 15 minute analysis. But it's done with full electromagnetic integrity. So, you know, typically we, we vary things by setting length and width and assigning uh, statistical parameters to that. What we've come up with is what we're calling shape modifiers. And these are elements that we place onto an electromagnetic structure that allow us to specify parametric change without a schematic to drive the overall analysis. So these shape modifiers are set up to model real world things. Um, processing a board, you over etch. All the lines get narrower than they should be by a roughly common amount. Or you've got layer registration errors. And instead of two layers being directly on top of each other, they're shifted a little bit. So these are the kinds of modifiers that we can use. They can be combined with Boolean operations to produce more complex relationships. And all of the modifiers are available to be associated with swept variables. So we can run over a predefined range without having to intercede between every every set of iterations. So here's an example of a WiMAX hairpin filter. Um, the design was synthesized using our iFilter tool and we optimized the nominal design with Microwave Office and Axiom, our 3D planar electromagnetic solver. And so the idea now is we've set a layer oversize modifier and that's what the shape modifiers look like that's one of them so that oversize is kind of equivalent to saying the board was under etched so we didn't remove enough material and all the lines ended up slightly wider than the nominal design 
we've introduced a swept variable and associated it with the shape modifier. So we're looking at under etching by minus one mil and then over etching by a half and positive one mil. And then the idea is that this is our nominal response. And by running that swept variable, we're able to produce a family of curves. Again, this kind of graph shouldn't look too unusual to you, but the fact that it was driven strictly through geometries and electromagnetic analysis is really the, the novel part of this solution. So these are the uh, responses as we swept the overetching. And you can see there's a pretty significant shift mostly toward the low side in the passband response. So one of the key requirements for this is that electromagnetic analysis has to be fast enough for you to tolerate the delay. Put a lot of work into Axiom. We are supporting direct EM optimization now. So this kind of multiple or iterative EM solution um, while it's certainly not as fast as closed form circuit analysis, it is well within the tolerable range with a capable computer and a reasonable plan in terms of, you know, number of iterations and step size and those kinds of things. So the idea is that we now offer the flexibility to bring electromagnetic analysis into a wider range of typical circuit designer activities than it's been traditionally applied in the past. That's my story. Any questions?